Marvelous hello, friends and loved ones, how was your year? I don't think it's a hot take to say that 2020 has been a pretty rough time for most of us, but at the same time, I think we can all agree that as far as video games are concerned, last year was one of the best. Not just in terms of releases, but even as far as announcements of upcoming titles and gaming events were concerned. The newest console generation has officially started, Tokyo Mirage Sessions actually made it into Fire Emblem Heroes, and Space Venture almost finally came out, but then didn't. I still have hope. But come on, we are here today to talk about those sweet 2020 games. In fact, there were so many great games in 2020 that I didn't feel comfortable narrowing things down to my usual top 10. So, in a possibly one-time-only celebratory event, here are my top 20 games of 2020. Before we get started, let me go through all of my usual prefaces. For one, please remember that I'm not saying these were the best games of 2020, but my personal favorites. If a game you love and or think deserve to be in this video isn't here, it's because I just didn't enjoy it as much as you did, or much more likely, I just didn't play it. Secondly, the rules for what can or can't be included go like this. The title has to have had a version of itself launch in 2020, and that version has to be my first experience with the game. This means that Persona 4 Golden isn't on this list, even though it came out on Steam in 2020, because I played it as a Vita game in 2012. But there are a few titles on this list that technically launched in 2019, but the versions I played came out in 2020. Also, regardless of how much I enjoyed them, I am excluding any and all early access titles. So if you're expecting to see the open-world indie masterpiece that is Lovely Fox, we're all gonna have to wait until another year. Third, I just wanted on record that some of the games on this list I did receive for free from the developers or publishers. That fact in no way affected my rankings, but I just want to be safe and mention that. And lastly, because I'm already doubling the usual size of this list, I won't be doing my usual honorable mentions. If you'd like to know what my honorable mentions were, just go back to this timestamp of the video and actually pay attention to the footage instead of my incredibly sexy voice. Alrighty, now that that's all out of the way, let's get started. Okay, I'm starting things off with a bit of a controversial pick. I argued with myself quite a bit over whether or not Battletoads deserved to make this list, and I eventually decided that it did but could not be ranked any higher than this. This over-the-top cartoony reboot of the classic Mimetic Rare series managed to do quite a few things right. The animation is fantastic, the writing works well for this type of game, there's a very talented voice cast, and the beat-em-up sections are legitimately fun. It's just a shame the game didn't focus on that aspect of itself. Instead, we have a title that felt the need to change genres every few minutes and give us several sections of what feels like very different games that last way too long and are, simply put, not that good. I legitimately hope this isn't the last time we see Rash, Pimple, and Zitz, but if we do get a sequel, it really needs to stick to its strengths next time. If you told me a year ago that I'd end up putting a video game adaptation of a tabletop game all about collecting birds on my list of top games of 2020, I'd probably believe you, because that sounds like a very plausible thing for me to do. Wingspan is just such a fun and relaxing strategy game all about, yeah, birds. Hatch them, collect them, use them to score points. I've played a few rounds of this game with my friends over Discord, and it's just a chill time for all involved. The artwork is soothing, and hearing the authentic bird calls or the dulcet tones of the narrator reciting bird facts is an experience I didn't know I needed until I had it. Longtime viewers of my channel are well aware that I've loved the FMV supernatural thriller games of Deveki Studios, and this year they brought us a spin-off to their previous title, The Shapeshifting Detective. 
Dark Knights with Poe and Monroe is a series of short, episodic mysteries starring everyone's favorite radio hosts from the creepy town of August. While I do think the game was a little bit weaker in terms of story and gameplay from the studio's previous titles, the absolute fantastic acting and chemistry from the two leads, Clemens Caring and Leah Cunard, sorry if I mispronounced either of your names, makes this a series of mysteries well worth solving. Speaking of follow-ups to 2018 games I talked about back then, the reboot of this classic point-and-click adventure series managed to get a sequel in the form of Leisure Suit Larry Wet Dreams Dry Twice. While the first title in this revival felt like a modern, satirical take on the current dating landscape, this game lost quite a bit of that charm with the direction that its story took. However, much like with Battletoads, I still enjoyed the aesthetic, there were quite a few good puzzles that left me feeling legitimately clever for solving them, and I definitely got a few laughs at some of the jokes. It's a raunchy adventure that definitely isn't for everyone, but I still appreciated seeing it this past year. We all know I like life simulation farming games. I made kind of a big deal about it, like, two months ago. But one game that came late in 2020, basically after that video had been written and recorded, was Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. You play as a diminutive harvest goddess that's been exiled to an island full of demons. And in order to survive and earn back your noble position, you must combine rice harvesting with foraging through 2D dungeons. There's something incredibly satisfying about the level of detail that went into each and every stage of planting rice. I legitimately felt like I learned something with Of Rice and Ruin. My absolute favorite thing in this game is sitting down with your fellow exiles at the end of a long day and just sharing a meal. It's nice. That is the main word I'd use to describe this game. Nice. Nice rice. Pokemon Snap is one of my favorite games. I've already done a video on it, and you bet your butt I'm hoping new Pokemon Snap launches this year. But a game that did a great job filling that void for me is Penko Park. As you explore this abandoned theme park, you take photos of the mysterious creatures that once inhabited it. Unlike with Pokemon, I never quite knew what to expect with this game, and I fell in love with this fantastic art style and sense of eerie ambiance, never really knowing what these animals were going to do. I feel like this game really flew under a lot of people's radar, so while it's not super high on this list, it is one of my most recommended titles for you all out there to look into, and maybe give it a try for yourselves. Back in summer 2019, I was pleasantly surprised by the announcement of a religious cyberpunk murder mystery game called Lucifer Within Us, where the main mechanic seemed to be centered around listening to witness statements, putting together a timeline of events, and utilizing this information to figure out the truth by finding contradictions in other testimonies or through evidence you found throughout your investigation. I'm happy to say that when the game launched in October of 2020, it was exactly that, and it was everything I ever wanted, and I played it for three hours straight. And then I stopped, because the game had ended. Maybe I'm just possessed by Beelzebub, because while I absolutely loved what I played, Lucifer Within Us' biggest fault is that it just left me hungry for so much more. Alright, it is impossible to talk about Paper Mario the Origami King without essentially discussing the entire series that exists around it. Is the Origami King a return to the classic form that fans have been wanting? Is it the revival of the styles we saw in 64 and Thousand Year Door? No. But it's still a fun, well-constructed, hilariously written, perfectly fine on its own merits title that I would personally say is the third best Paper Mario game well above some of the other more recent attempts. It had memorable characters and pretty solid dungeon design, so while I'm not necessarily looking to go back and replay it anytime soon, it definitely earns a spot near the middle of this list because Paper Mario the Origami King is... okay. Speaking of living up to a legacy, let's give it up for Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time. Now, I'm well aware, trust me, I am well aware, that this game is basically two separate games. A fun, happy, engaging romp that plays amazingly well and has some of the best interpretations of these characters the series has ever seen, 
And then the nightmare fiery trials of pain and humiliation that is attempting to complete this game. Luckily, I gravitate much more towards the first side, so I had an absolute blast with this title. It had that special something that I just can't quite put my finger on. 2020 was the year of remakes and remasters. Battle for Bikini Bottom, Destroy All Humans, 13... We don't need to talk about that one. But one that really stood out to me was Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town. I don't have much to say about this one. It's a cute, charming, fun, solid remake of one of my favorite games in the series. It added just enough new elements to help elevate itself, like the lovely Jennifer, and letting me have a bunch of rabbits that I named after various pasta. Friends of Mineral Town is just a good game, and the only reason it's being kept out of the top 10 is because they removed the rival marriages, which I thought was a little bit of a step backwards. Okay, I know this is already a top 20, but the number 10 spot is a tie. They just have so much in common, I had to make them share this spot. Both are enhanced versions of Megami Tensei games that I've already talked about in previous top 10 videos, and while I do believe that Persona 5 Royal and Tokyo Mirage Session Sharp FE Encore are the definitive ways to play either game, the reason I have them right in the middle at number 10 is because neither had the same impact on me that their originals did when they first launched. The best way I can describe these games is to paraphrase a bit from famed comedian Louis Black. There's Encore, which is a game with no ideas, and Royal, which is a game with bad ideas. Back in 2016, I had the remake of Final Fantasy Adventure, Adventures of Mana on my top 10 list. In 2018, I didn't do an official top 10 list, but if I had, the remake of Secret of Mana probably would have been on it. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that in 2020, we're rounding out the trilogy with the remake of the once elusive third title, Trials of Mana. Sure, there's definitely a degree of pedigree that secured its spot on this list, but I genuinely do think this is the best of the remakes. It legitimately felt like they worked hard to make a fun and engaging title that feels less like a 3D version of the existing game and stands out pretty well as its own experience. Murder by Numbers is fun. As I already revealed when I talked about Lucifer Within Us earlier in this video, I have a soft spot for a good murder mystery game, especially if it's one with a zany and engaging cast of characters. And this Ace Attorney-esque murder mystery about a woman and her new robot friend solving a series of murders built around the world of 90s TV drama had me hooked from start to finish. From the art to the music, I loved this game. The only hiccup? I suck at Picross. So, fun fact, I actually used to own the original Shantae for the Game Boy Color. I bought it because I was really late to jump on the Game Boy Advance train, but then I let a friend borrow it and he moved before I was able to get it back. Yes, I'm still bitter, Tyler, but having the complete Shantae collection on the Switch definitely helps things a bit, especially with how much enjoyment I got out of the latest title, Shantae and the Seven Sirens. Overall, it's just another fun entry in a series I love. The game is filled with vibrant colors, well-constructed gameplay, cute character designs, bopping music, and did I mention cute character designs? It's a good game that feels right at home with the other titles, and you bet I'm already psyched for Shantae 6. Paper Mario and the Origami King may not have been the return to the series' roots that fans have been wanting, but the developers of Bug Fables The Everlasting Sapling scream to the heavens, I'LL DO IT MYSELF! And they did. Bug Fables is such a charming title that will not only tickle your nostalgia bone, but easily stands out as a fantastic new indie IP with a lot of potential that anyone can enjoy, not just fans of Paper Mario. It's clear how much love and passion was put into this game, and I was more addicted to this than nearly any other RPG I played in 2020. Look, I'm not gonna say a lot about Rune Factory 4 Special because A, this is a Switch port of an early 2010s 3DS game. I'm not even sure if it's fair to have it on this list at all. And B, I already did an entire video on it like two months ago that you should totally go watch when you're done here. Yes, even if you've already seen it. So why is it here and why is it so high on the list? 
because I just love Rune Factory 4 that much. They took a game I loved, made it even better and more accessible by putting it on the Switch, added a fair amount of new features, and this game is literally the reason why I scream marvelous hello at the start of most of my videos. It deserves to be here. God, I loved Monster Prom. It was fun, frantic, hilariously written, and I just had an absolute blast playing through the outrageous and absurd scenarios, whether I was by myself or playing with friends. It was easily one of the best titles of 2018. Oh right, 2020. Well, last year we got Monster Prom 2, Monster Camp, and it's essentially everything I loved about Monster Prom, but newer. New locations, new scenarios, and in a recent update, even some new player characters, which is super cool. There are a few good additions to the formula, but this is a sequel that proves you don't have to reinvent the wheel to make a quality follow-up. You just need to give more love and attention to the big titty goth GF, which they did, so... Thank you, Monster Camp. I like indie games. I like relaxing environments. I love character-driven storylines that leave me caring about the events unfolding for the cast I'm meeting, and no game of 2020 captured all of that better for me than Coffee Talk. Some of you may remember me talking about the demo for this game back in 2018, and if the demo alone left that much of a positive impression on me, it shouldn't come as a surprise that I adored the final product as much as I did. Coffee Talk is a game about running a cafe in a fantasy-based Seattle, but instead of worrying about the business management aspect of things, you just talk to your customers, occasionally serve them the drinks they ask for, and experience their tales through the eyes of your barista. Like a good cup of coffee, it's a wonderful thing to just sit back with, relax, and enjoy for a while. I cannot recommend this game enough. And to toss another quick bonus game on this list, the writer of Coffee Talk also released a game called What Comes After. It's only about an hour long, but is well worth your time. I'm not going to spoil any of this one, but consider looking into it. Alright, so this may be a first out of all these lists I've done. I'm not giving this spot to a specific game, but the contributions of an entire series. Between the brand new and amazing RPG experience that was Yakuza Like a Dragon, where I absolutely fell in love with Ichiban Kasuga, to the remastered trilogy release of Yakuza 3, 4, and 5, bringing these titles to my PS4 in one convenient package, to even the limited release Sega Anniversary Celebration that was Streets of Kamurocho, a retro beat-em-up experience that I'd love to see revamped into a full title. 2020 was just a great year to be a Yakuza fan, so I'm giving this spot to the entire Yakuza series. Sure, if I had to pick one game, it'd definitely be Like a Dragon, but I had so much to appreciate from the entire franchise last year. I think there was only one other game I sunk more of my time into. What is there for me to really say about Animal Crossing New Horizons? Sure, there's a lot of stuff they need to add through updates, and I know they've got plans down the road, but no other game of this year have I played every single day and even still look forward to playing because there's still stuff for me to do. In December, I was finally able to catch all the bugs and fish. I've started collecting models for my butterfly garden. I've grown my blue roses. I've still got more DIYs to find and villager photos to earn. And it's not even just me. I've had a blast visiting my sister's island and sharing stuff with my friends. It may come across as cliche, but this game has been my safe haven over what has been a pretty terrible year for me. No matter how rough things got, I could always just spend an hour in my own little tropical paradise. Since it came out, this game has remained a staple of my day-to-day -day life, and it hasn't even slowed down for me yet. I absolutely love Animal Crossing New Horizons, both for what it is and what it has the potential to become, and I can't think of any other title from 2020 that deserves to be called my number one game. And so there you have it, 20 plus games that I loved and enjoyed throughout 2020. I'm sure there are some games that you all thought or expected would be on this list, but that is the beauty of gaming. We can like what we like and love what we love and play whatever we happen to play. 
And honestly, I want all of you to share that love with me down in the comments by telling me what was your favorite game of 2020. Now, before I get going, I do want to give special thanks to everybody who has supported me over this past year. We just hit 7,000 subscribers recently, so I'm very grateful for that, and I'm really excited to see everything that I've got planned for the upcoming year, and I hope all of you are as well. But for now, I'm just gonna say goodbye, and I will see all of you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, be sure to click like, but if you really liked it, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Extra special thanks to all my friends and loved ones over on Patreon, which you can pledge to today to see your own name in these ending credits. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, take care.